thermometers to really tell you your rough spot. Chin, neck, under your nose, anywhere. This is the Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, home of the Michigan Wolverines, the nation's top-ranked college football team. Today, more than 100,000 fans, most of them wearing the maize and blue of Michigan, will be on hand for this homecoming game against Minnesota. Minnesota coming into the game with a mark of 5-2 and two on the season. Michigan, of course, is undefeated and untied 7-0 and, oh, and top-ranked in the nation. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Fleming, welcoming you to this homecoming game between the Wolverines and the Golden Gophers. And as you probably know, they play for the most uh, famous trophy, I think, in all of football. And here it is with me right now. This is the Little Brown Jug. It was back in 1903 that Fielding H. Yost took one of his famous point-a-minute teams to Minneapolis to play. Michigan was favored, but Minnesota tied that day 6-6. Six six. Well, during the course of the afternoon, Mr. Yost had sent Tommy Roberts, the student manager, out for a jug to put some water in. When the game was over, there was mass confusion. Michigan came away without the jug. And so they sent a note to Minnesota. They said, where's our jug? And Minnesota, in effect, said, come and get it. Well, since that time, they've been playing for it. On one side is Michigan. There are the scores down through the years. And, of course, the other side is Minnesota. If Michigan wins today, it'll be the ninth year in a row for possession, and that would be a new record. In just a moment, Jim Lamp will be back to talk about the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Most people around here agree that Minnesota will be the toughest team the top-ranked Michigan has played so far this season. In the past two years, Coach Cal Stahl has moved the Golden Gophers to the top of the Big Ten's Little Eight. Those are the eight teams that don't play in the Ohio State-Michigan game. Still, only the wildest Minnesota partisan would pick them to win the game. If they're going to have a chance to challenge the Wolverines, they'll ride on the arm and legs of Tony Dungy, senior quarterback from nearby Jackson, Michigan. Dungy is probably the most established quarterback in the Big Ten this year. He has as much actual game experience as any quarterback in the country. He was the starter and played much of the time as a freshman in 1973. And in 1974, he held the job all year. But his results were miserable. So bad that Coach Cal Stahl declared the job open before the 1975 season in the hopes another quarterback would take command. But Dungy responded to that challenge. He improved his passing dramatically. And last year became the Big Ten leader in total offense. He's always been a very good runner. He's become a good passer with the help of two wide receivers. One of them an all Big Ten player named Kulis, Ron Kulis. Coach Cal Stahl has coached a lot of good receivers in his career, among them former Baltimore Colt great Jimmy Orr. But because of his ability to catch passes on the sideline and make acrobatic passes, he says Kulis is the best. For all of the Big Ten's little eight teams, depth is a problem. It's especially a problem for Minnesota today because of an unbelievable siege of injuries in the past couple of weeks. The list of those who cannot play or who are going to play but will play in number 16 all together and many of them names that you're going to see on the screen right now frontline players starters or reserves who play a lot the problem is especially critical on defense the two key players there george washington a nose guard and george adjic has gone safety are among the injured players and now behind me the michigan band playing one of the great fight songs in all of college football hail to the victors For the start of this football game, Bill Fleming will be here to talk about Michigan in just a moment. This 1976 Michigan football team certainly deserves to be ranked with some of the top teams of all time, at least in the minds of Michigan people. Just consider statistically, they are number one in both polls. They lead the nation in scoring with a whopping 43.9 points per game. They also lead in rushing. And get this, every time they rush the ball, they get 6.6 .6 yards. And yet, there is a feeling among many that Michigan really has not been tested. They want to know just how tough they are. They do know this. They have a very potent offense. They have a young man at quarterback by the name of Rick Leach. He wears number seven. He's just a sophomore. Last year, in his baptism of fire as a freshman, he learned his lessons well. Watch how cleverly he works the beer option. He even fooled our cameraman on that one. He's got good speed. When he gets out into the open, he can run well. But he has that uncanny ability of being able to release the ball to his trailing halfback at just the right time. And if he doesn't release it, then he keeps and ducks in the hole. 
He's a devastating runner and, of course, causes the defenses lots of problems. Now, a year ago, Rick Leach was not what you could call a great passer. He only completed about 30% of his passes. But this year, he's clipping along at something like 52% of his passes. And this is Michigan's leading receiver, Jimmy Smith, a wingback who every time he catches the football averages 28.7 yards per catch. Now, Michigan has great speed, speed in the backfield. They have a young man back there by the name of Harlan H. Baum Huckleby. He's just a sophomore and has that kind of speed that Coach Bo Schembechler likes to see in the backfield. He can go all the way at any given instant. Once he sees that opening, he is gone. Also in the backfield is a young man by the name of Rob Lytle, who this season could very well surpass the all-time rushing record. And, of course, if Huckleby keeps up like he's been going as a sophomore, he could even surpass what Rob Lytle may do this year. Lytle himself is not only a great runner and who can play tailback or fullback, but he's also a devastating blocker. He's also a very interesting young man, as you'll find out in just a moment. But watch his moves. When Lytle gets through, he has really got some speed. He can cut. He can hit hard. He can do anything that is asked of him at any time, any place. Jim Lampley talked with Rob Lytle just a little bit earlier, and here's their conversation. Uh, there has to be a sort of inherent frustration having been here for the past few years at Michigan. The record is so good, win after win, yet no Rose Bowl. So many times you've been ranked in the top two or three, and yet no national championship. As you come down to these last few games, do you think about the disappointments of the past? Well, I'll tell you, it's been four frustrating years for me, and this is my last chance. And I think all the players realize, you know, who played last year realize what it was to, you know, I mean, they worked hard all year, and then to come down to the last game, you know, what happened uh, last year. So uh, everybody is, you know, fired up for every game this year, and, you know, we just, uh, we're, I don't know what would happen if we'd lost the game this year. For that reason, I guess it would mean more to players here to be ranked number one week after week than it might somewhere else. Ooh. Oh, I definitely believe it does because I'll tell you, I, you know, some of the weaker teams maybe we played in the years past we wouldn't be as up for. But this year, since we've been, I think, ranked and we know we have this, this national championship within our grass, everybody seems to be really fired up for each game. It doesn't matter who we're playing. Is this the best team you've played on here? I wouldn't say it is the best team. It's probably the most diversified team I played on. They can, uh, we can pass, we can run, and uh, and our option option plays are wide open. So, uh, you know, there's no way a defense can key on just one person. What about the record? How will you feel about becoming the all-time leading ground gainer in a school that's produced so many great football names? Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's going to be a big thrill for me. Uh, I, you know, it's something that's always been in the back of my mind, even when I was recruited, both said, well, I'd have a shot at that. He says he felt that, you know, I'd have the capabilities of doing that. So, you know, it's been something in the back of my mind since, you know, ever since I've been here. But still, this uh, team effort is the most important thing. And, and I feel that, you know, so once we win, you know, everything, then that'll be just icing on the cake. Rob, you're not big enough to run over a lot of tacklers. <laughs> what are your strengths as a runner? My strength as a runner is probably my offensive line. Because what they do is, you know, they're quick and, and, and they're big and they're powerful, and they, uh, they open up these little creases for me. And uh, that's all I, you know, that's all I need because I feel that I'm quick enough to get into the crease and get away from those big defense and then so I don't really maybe take the punishment that uh, most uh, bigger fullbacks would take. What's in the future for Rob Light, professional football? Well, if that, you know, if that comes about, then I'd like to give that a try. But if it doesn't, then uh, I'd like to go back home and uh, I work with my dad. And you'd like to go back home and say you won a national championship in Michigan? I uh, sure would, I'll tell you. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be just great. That's just icing on the cake because that's something we've been striving for for four years, and I hope we can do it my senior year. You know, Michigan has had a tradition of great linebacking. Adolf Germany Schultz invented that position back in the fielding HO days. Since that time, of course, they've had Chuck Bernard and Roger Zetkoff and Dick Kempthorne and, of course, uh, Mike Taylor and Don Dupin. They also have a fellow this year who falls into that tradition. His name is Calvin O'Neill. He wears number 96, and you're going to see him in evidence today, as you will also see a man by the name of Greg Morton, who wears number 77. 
He hits hard, but he also has an interesting pastime. He raises plants. Listen to this. I was raised with my grandmother, and her and my grandfather would usually be out in the garden, you know, digging up peas and planting potatoes and whatnot. And my grandmother had a big flower garden where she would plant flowers. And I was living with my grandmother most of the time. And so I would, you know, monkey see, monkey do, so I'd be out there with her. And I just got used to planting flowers and growing flowers. And as I got older, you know, they never left me. This is my pride and joy right here. This is Phyllis the Philodendrum right here. And she just brought us some new leaves. Oh, and right. I got cactus plants, which you can see here, and jade plants. And this is a tiger plant here. This doesn't relate to football or well, history or pretty law. <laughs> Well, not really, you know, this, it helps me relax a lot. And, you know, a lot of times I can um, come, you know, come home or whatnot and, you know, take care of plants and water the plants. And it takes a lot of tension off you, especially, you know, for me, uh, during Thursday is a mental day, you know, for, you know, us on the football team. It's just like we're getting all our assignments down and whatnot. And it just gives you time to, to think out what you got to do for the upcoming Saturday. And for me, when I'm around my plants and whatnot, you know, I think about that person I'm playing over and what assignments I have to carry out and what I have to do, you know, to have a good game on Saturday. But it doesn't fit the stereotype of a big defensive tackle. <laughs> well, I agree with you there. A lot of people say, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't fit the stereotype of a big defensive tackle. But, you know, it's a, a side of me that, you know, too many people don't see out there on the field. You know, they see number 77, you know, tackling people and chasing after people. And then they come in and they say, good gracious, you know, look at all these plants around. Who's are they? And I say, hey, they're my plants. And they look at me and say, these are your plants? You know, it's, it just seems so different. Oh, a very unusual man is Greg Morton of Michigan. We're getting close to kickoff time, and we'll be back in just a moment. So here it is, the Michigan Stadium. The place where the Ulster Bonds and the Harmons and the Wisterts, the Zatkoffs, the Kramers, have performed down through the years. And it's the scene today of Minnesota against Michigan. The Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor. And this is Bill Fleming inviting you to join Pete Jackson, Bud Wilkinson, Jim Lampley, and me for ABC's exclusive telecast of the Golden Gophers of Minnesota against the Wolverines of Michigan.